Hello everyone, my name is Sean Hendricks and I'm here with Solomon Rogers, Sol as we all like to call him, of Rewind. And we're just here to talk a little bit about uh, everything from immersive video, VR, AR, all this different stuff. Uh, it just so happens I was here in town shooting some interviews with Saul around these things and one of the things that came up was 360 video and as we're both communicating back and forth, it's like, well, why don't we just do that part of the interview in 360 video? So here we are. So again, thanks for having me come out, My Saul. My absolute pleasure, absolutely. So, um, so hi, I'm Saul, Managing Director of Rewind to Reality Production Studio and VR has a lot of different stuff we can do. So there's everything from uh, gameplay, true VR, Unreal Engine, high-end computer graphics, all the way down to straight 360 video, which you're watching this now. And if you take a look up here, you'll see the clock tower. And if you follow me this way, we'll go all the way around. We can end up being able to walk around the entire space and we can end up, if you stay there and I'll stay here, you can find out that now we're, uh, now we're on opposite to the camera. So you can choose where you want to watch. So one of the problem is with this sort of technology is these guys don't have to look at us. Exactly. They, they can They're actually be paying, ignoring us not entirely. Not paying attention to the fingers and the thumbs up or anything else. But it's an interesting uh, way of experiencing content because you now will feel like you're standing with us. Um, so we've done a lot of projects recently in 360 video. Um, which ones are we talking about? I think we wanted to start off talking about uh, things like Lexus and BMW. Oh yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so why don't we, why don't we, before we dive right into the projects, let's just talk a little bit about, uh, I know one of the things that drives you nuts every time you see someone do presentations and they kind of lump AR, VR, 360 as all, as all, they're all the same thing. Yeah. And obviously, not really so. No, they're really, really not. Um, so. Virtual reality um, gets blended with the same brush. You're watching through an amazing medium at the moment, but the problem with it at the moment is that it really is uh, very similar to virtual tools, or in fact, QuickTime VR, if you remember it back in the late 90s. But it is a spherical environment, and it's very, very cool. It's very intimate, and it allows you to feel like you're with us. Now, there's two types of ways of doing it. There's um, an avatar, which is us looking at you and communicating with you, or there's a ghost or we ignore you and you yes. just get to be this voyeuristic person who happens to be with us in the space. Both are very, very good ways of making content, but both have a very different way of um, experiencing it. The problem with 360 video is you press play and you get to look where you want to look and you can follow me to the next cam round to number one and now you're stuck directly between Sean and I. Yes. So if you wanted to look over at Sean. You have to turn all the way around to look over at me or and then if you flip want, back to him. <laughs> you have to come all the way back over this side. Which makes it after you, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the 360 camera is not exactly obvious to most people in the crowd, so they don't recognize necessarily that no. we're shooting, which is fine. But we're, you're stuck on rails. You have to go through this whole this whole piece from one end to the other. But if we make you, if we made true VR CGI, which is in gameplay, um, you get to be in that world. And not only are you in that world, you can interact. You can fire bow and arrow, you can drive cars, whatever you want to do in that space because it's coming from a game engine, you also get very good stereoscopic um, immersive reality. So you feel like you're there, you can feel distance and space. We're shooting this on our smallest 360 camera at the moment, which is made of six GoPros actually, and then the content is stitched back together. But once you've stitched it back together, you don't get very good stereoscopic content. It doesn't feel like depth. You don't, you don't know quite how far away I am <laughs> as a lorry arrives. Oh, nice. <laughs> As you can see, this is a live shoot out of the thing. So let's do some magic and take us somewhere else because that dump truck was really pissing me off. Uh, and it's, I've always had, every time I do interview shoots, there's always a dump truck backing up in the background somewhere or delivery vehicle or something making that beeping noise. So it was, it was bound to happen to us. Absolutely. But one of the things we've just done, which is why everyone has to relearn their cinematography, is we just transported you instantly. And if you were watching this on YouTube or any VR headset, it's not that you're doing an edit or a cut. We're actually changing your whole universe instantly, like you teleported somewhere else. And imagine trying to do a music video or a fast-paced action exactly. thriller. Exactly. When we first started talking about doing this little video, just as, it was almost kind of an experimental test. because I've never tried to do an interview through a 360 video. So the first thing you start thinking about is, OK, let's, we can't really edit people down to the words, because that's going to get ugly. You, you, if you want to throw B-roll on something, it's like, a little floating window, like 
And if they're not looking there, they don't see the little <laughs> floating window. So there's a lot of things that you have to kind of change up the way you think about shooting something like this. Uh, but definitely makes it a little more interesting. It does. It's, it's, a, it's a great technology and it's really, it's really, really powerful. And some people are doing some amazing things. So uh, some teams are taking this sort of camera technology to uh, bowler camps or, uh, or Syria and allowing people to really feel and understand where another place may be. A lot of it's being used for documentary style because it's great. It shoots everything all at once. And if you haven't looked behind you already, if you look up there, there's a very old cathedral in St. Albans, which is a beautiful place. And if we could, we would have taken you to the top of that. But you're now being transported into a very quiet, calm park. And it's very, very immersive. I hope if you haven't already, have a look at this on a YouTube player on Android and hopefully iOS soon and put it into a Google Cardboard. It's a yes. very, very different experience than looking at it on this desktop. Yes. Which and then with your be. mouse panning around is not a, at all the same kind of experience. Not at all, not at all. Um, so we've created loads of content in this, in this medium um, and it's very, very useful. So um, let's take you off to driving up Goodwood. And now, you're, as you can see in front of you, look around in front and behind you, you're now sitting on the boot, uh, bonnet of this brand new BMW, about to go off the start line. Um, and it goes incredibly fast. As you can see, the trees are wishing past you right now. And you get to the first corner and then wave you go. And I'll, I'll bring you back. And maybe... I think one that I, I thought was fun to, to play around with is the whole fashion model aspect oh, of things. Model. I think so that was a very good one. You try clicking your fingers. All right, let's see if I can do it. Oh, there we are. So now we're in the back of a taxi. We're very late for a day. So we had a whole day with our own fashion show, which was nice. They drag you out of the cab. You'll be walking past the paparazzi now. The, uh, they're, they're, they're rushing you in to get your hair and makeup done. And let's just skip you a little bit further into that video. And now you're onto the catwalk and we'll go all the way down. So for me, I know what it's like to be a model every day. So it's absolutely fine. But you know, for people like at home, this might be something new. Um, and now let's bring you back again. And so, that content can really take you anywhere on, uh, and put you in a position that you don't normally get. And because we've given you the control to look around, that's really, really immersive. It really, really is immersive. So stereoscopic 360 video is even more immersive, but we have these problems. So this camera technology is fantastic, but if I now just go into this horrible bit in the middle and my post guys are hating this, I am now smack in the middle between two lenses which means I have a stitch error across my face and probably look disgusting. So let's move across to the next sweet spot. I'll be so I'll come back to this side so we can talk. You can see, you have to see both of us at the same time. So it has some inherent problems we have to get past. We can't edit in the way we do. We can't do B-roll in the same way we used to do. And also the cameras are all separate, so they have stitch errors. So we have to use different software packages to really pull this together. Um, our key one, it, it kind of leaning on our VFX background, is Nuke. So you can pull all those bits together, clean and stitch and cut and roto and try and patch all the errors. And that's basically the process you're going to have to go to if, say, we wanted to add any really complicated extra footage into it. You're going to have to kind of unwarp everything, put stuff in, rewarp, do whatever you can to try and make it match. As I mentioned with B-roll, if we wanted to put that little square window in, and look at that, there's their bell. <laughs> <laughs> If you, if you try and fit a little bit of B-roll into the shot, you drop it into this warped footage, the B-roll itself will end up looking warped to you. So it adds a whole other level of complexity for anything you want to put in the video. Let's put a little bit of just between hands. Just right there, just there, okay. Take it away, it'll float. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. All we need, all we need is drop shadows now. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. But it's a really interesting medium to work with in. Um, it's not what, it, it's not true VR, as we were talking about earlier, so CGI, Unreal, you, you have the ability to choose where you are and all. You're stuck on this pivot point. It's, you have the choice of where to look, but you can't move unless we move you. But um, the high-end CGI version needs a really big graphics card. It needs to be running in UE4 and be the best, you know, millions of polygons. But we can actually render that back into CGI video. So our Red Bull Air Race project is our biggest CGI world we've created. And it needs the fastest computer you can get to it. But if we now take you into the plane, what we're showing you now is a 360 render of what it's like to be in the cockpit of that CGI plane. The nice thing is the no, there's no stitch errors now because it's all CGI. And you can look around you and we'll, we'll take you on a flight around um, the Ascot race course, which is uh, in the UK very soon. And you start from the finishing line, you look left and right, you can start to see the wings, and then we'll take off and fly you around. But uh, again, it's not stereoscopic, so you, you don't get the full depth and immersion. And it's not quite the same thing as seeing it in the game engine. It's no. still very, very good. There's still something to be said for actually being able to hold the controls and actually try and make yourself nauseous in the game as well. <laughs> so let's bring you back up that first loop, back into the game. So 
it's very, very good to be able to transport that and basically convert that, that content into other mediums. And all of, our, all of us have smartphones now, so as I get, go and look at this on the YouTube player for iOS and Android, and you can actually drop yourself into the content. Um, and by putting it into a Google Cardboard or a similar thing, you get to be there. And this phone isn't as the most powerful thing in the world. It's graphics cards minute, but you still get a feeling of presence. You still get to understand being in that content. And it's, it's a great medium. But for someone like yourself who shoot a lot of this type of content, there's a, there's a lot it's, to it's, learn. It's a bit of a different kind of experience. Suddenly you realize I'm very limited to my transitions. I'm very limited to uh, basically trying not to completely wrench your world every... <laughs> like if you look at a normal edit I would do an interview, there might be six or seven cuts in 25 seconds. Yeah. And suddenly it's like, you're trying to imagine that if your entire world is switching every, every so many seconds. But I guess one of the questions I have for you is, uh, the 360 video thing is, is really starting to show up more and more. Obviously as the rigs get smaller, like here we're working with a, a GoPro series of cameras all mounted in a rig. Uh, obviously if you try and make it stereoscopic, things get yeah. a little bit bigger. Uh, but where do you see this type of technology going from here? What, what kind of uses do you kind of envision wanting to do at some point in the future? So there's been a lot of, a lot of good stuff being done in documentary. So film a, a show or a race or something, like some live event. The really interesting stuff is when people are starting to craft their own narrative. So true VR or 360 VR directors are trying to learn how to use this technology to tell really immersive stories. Um, and as, as we are in the, right now, I can't hide the camera crew. I can't hide the sound guy, although he's over there. I'm pretending to be a background character. I can't hide a lighting rig. Nope. So suddenly we're stripping back to the very, very bare bones of production. We can do some stuff where we shoot one side or the other and then stitch it all together, but it's, it's really a, a brand new medium to work within. Um, where I think this stuff's going is that um, we're on the, you know, the, the alpha or the beta version of this technology. Um, there's a couple of companies looking at light field 360 cameras. And awesome. Those not only record 360 video, but they also record depth. And if you can record depth, you can do stereoscopic and you can also do a little bit of movement within it. So Jaunt are talking about theirs and there's a couple of other companies just in the distance. I think it'd be interesting too, once you start being able to do that, there's the possibility with the correct tools from vendors start saying, well, what if I just want to do an edit of a person that's in the shot and keep the background as much as possible mm -hmm. so that now using Z-Depth you can actually start to clip things out and try and control it that way. I think that would be pretty cool. Well, hopefully uh, some lovely people with some good software packages will help us get to that point. But um, as I've said before, VR production in, in either real time or in 360 video or any flavor in between is such a new medium that um, I was talking to the guys at DreamWorks and they said anyone that calls himself an expert in virtual reality production is a liar because we've only been doing this for two years and even they've only been doing it for two years. We can call ourselves specialists because we're specializing in virtual reality production, but it's, it's a very different thing. And all of us are learning. So the, the whole idea that we've taken from kind of Facebook production of, you know, get something out there, fail fast, learn from it, do something again, is absolutely brilliant to do. And, and in this industry, we're all sharing and all trying to learn together to produce the best content we can. Lightfield's going to be very interesting. Um, and I think that will enhance and change everything. I'm waiting for someone to make one single <laughs> kind of spherical <laughs> center <laughs> sensor that will fix all these little stitch errors. But it's, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and I think for production, it's a very interesting space to kind of shoot content like this because it opens up uh, the ability to capture things or show people spaces they don't normally get to. Absolutely. And it, it really is uh, compared to uh, a normal documented video interview or anything like that where you do it the impetus of storytelling is normally very much on the on the person making the video and the story can actually change quite a bit when suddenly you as the person sitting inside that camera nexus is controlling what you look at and what you read into the world that you're seeing i think that makes it a very fascinating thing to do as you say when they take it to disaster zones and stuff like that it now there's no longer some guy like let me crop in close to get the tear on that one the story has to be told with the whole space um there is no frame most of our time is spent with frames and edits, and there is none. You, you choose the frame you want to look at, and we can't forcibly edit you around. So it's a, a very, very different medium. It's very fun to work with in there because it's, everyone's learning. Um, we can stick you on a drone and fly you up and around here. We can put you in a car. We can put you in our bag, wherever it may be. But um, I think for documentary stuff, it's fantastic, first yes, and foremost. Absolutely. Um, so why don't we uh, wrap this up with maybe one final 
teleportation to some other uh -huh. world. Where should we take you? Well, we could take you to two places. We could take you to a little glimpse of being on an Icelandic beach with Bjork, which looks very beautiful. <laughs> Now, just bring you back from Bjork. Um, there's a great piece we'll finish with just a minute's worth of um, uh, a training session we've done with these amazing gymnasts um, called Gravity. So let's take you there, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>